Good day, brethren. You are welcome to RCC Junior Covenant Parish's Open Heavens Daily Devotional. The Open Heavens Daily Devotional is written by our Father and the Lord, the General of of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E. Adeboy. And I pray that as you join me today, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, 27th August 2024, we will be looking at the topic, Walking for God. Our memory verse is taken from John 6, 28, which says, Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might do? that we might walk the works of God. Our text is taken from Hebrews 6, 9-14. to But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, though we do speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do shew the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made promise to Abraham, he, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee. When I got born again, that's according to our Father and the Lord, in the redeemed Christian Church of God, those that served in the church were not called workers. They were called children of God. There was a reason behind that. When a child gets to his father's house and sees that things are not put where they should be, he or she naturally starts putting things right. However, when a visitor comes into that same house, he or she will simply find a place to sit and remain there. If you see God as your father, whenever you get to his house, you will do whatever you can to make things work smoothly. You wouldn't go to your father's house and not care about the outlook and advancement of the place. There are many benefits of being a worker in God's house. One of them is stated in 2 Timothy 2.6. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. So, as children of God, we are not expected to be idle in the house of God. When children enter their father's house, there's something they do some form of chore that they are engaged in. So as children of God, we should not be like strangers or visitors where we just come and go. Rather, we must be involved in one thing in the house of God. And we have now been told that there are benefits for uh, being a worker in the house of God. I will look into that briefly. Because you are a husband man, one who is cultivating the land to produce fruits for everyone, you'll be the first partaker of those fruits. In other words, when you work to make services run smoothly, you'll be the first partaker of the blessings and miracles that happen in those services. No, no one works for God without getting a real God. Hebrews 6 verse 10 says clearly, For God is not righteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shewed towards his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. So, as someone who works in the house of God, you must expect that God will not forget your labor of love. You will actually be the first partakers of the blessing, the first partakers of the fruits, the first partakers of the benefits uh, from the house of God. God will never forget whatever labor you have done out of love for him. God decrees in Leviticus 19.13 that no laborer must be denied these or her wages. Do you think he will not reward you for working directly with him? Your wages when you work for him include protection, provision, a sound mind, deliverance, speedy answers to prayers, and a whole lot more. While it is fine for a church to employ or pay professionals for some services, I always tell church members who are adamant about charging a fee for rendering any service without being employed by the church, that they shouldn't expect anything from God again, as they cannot get paid twice for the same service. As a worker in the church, once you insist on getting paid money for any service you render in the church, you have made yourself a hireling in his house and not his child. So, uh, our Father and the Lord is saying here that um, God never forgets our labor of love and that our wages from God includes protection, provision, sound mind, deliverance, speedy answers to prayers, and a whole lot more. And our Father and the Lord is also saying that for those who are not employees of the church, 
but they are demanding a fee for service that they should be aware that that is already their pay. So if they are not employed by the church as uh, workers for the church, but they are expected to contribute as you know, just children in the house of God, then we should not be expecting uh, human payment. Rather, because according to our Father and Lord, that amounts to getting paid twice. But if we uh, see ourselves as children, we should be able to do certain things in the house of God and in his service. And it will in turn bless us with all necessary benefits for us to live a good and prosperous life. Our reflection says, are you really a child of God or just a visitor in his house? Let us think about this as we go about our activities. What is my contribution to Uh, the service of God, what is my contribution to my father's house. If we have not been doing anything, let us make up our mind to join the workforce and do something for God. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word to us today. We ask, Lord, that you help us to be truly your children, help us to be actively involved in your service, help us not to be visitors, help us not to be strangers in the name of Jesus. And every blessing and benefit that comes with it, Father, Lord God Almighty, let them be our portion in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you.